Hello and welcome back to the Toronto website developer.com. I am Peter Orski, the Toronto website developer specializing in Drupal. And in this fifth video tutorial of our seven of our 10 part video tutorial series on Drupal 7 module development, I want to walk you through hook menu. And what this allows us to do is actually create pages in Drupal uh, so that you have something available at the URL that you'll actually specify. Uh, so it's a pretty powerful hook. We're going to use it. And I'm going to actually show you how you can go through uh, the system of trying to find information in Drupal. So I'm not just going to tell you how hook menu works, but rather I'm going to show you the thought process that I would go through if I were actually using hook menu. Uh, I just want to think my screen's a little bit off here, so I'm just going to move that up. Uh, on that said, uh, you'll notice I'm at torontoessaydeveloper.com slash store. Here you can go ahead and purchase my video tutorial series, this one included, once I have it finished up. Every one of those purchases goes to help me continue to bring these video tutorials for you at no cost on YouTube. So I hugely appreciate everyone that makes a purchase. Uh, it does go a long way and it helps me to continue to bring these to you. Um, that said, if you don't have the money to purchase a series but you would like to help me out, Please leave a comment on YouTube. Let me know how this is helping you uh, or a thumbs up. I greatly appreciate those and YouTube uses them to see how users are interacting with these video tutorials and help promote them to others. Lastly, you can always subscribe to my YouTube channel. Hugely appreciate that as well. Love to see that number grow uh, and it's a big achievement for me. So uh, it really means a lot if you subscribe. That said, I'm going to head back over to our site. Uh, you'll notice I'm at, uh, I'm at Flag Application, a bit of a giveaway on where we're going to end up. Um, but you see, I've got a couple applications here. I've gone ahead and I submitted them. And if I look in the database, I can go to Flag Application and I can find them. But on the site, there's no actual way to navigate to them to approve them or deny them or what have you. And we need to create that, obviously. Otherwise, our module doesn't do a whole lot to the end user. Um, what I'd like to do is actually create a similar system to this. So if I go to admin slash content, I can see all the nodes here and I can do different things to them. And it's all in this nice table. This is my end goal. I want to have this table and I want to have update conditions is going to be uh, approve or deny or what have you. So how do we get doing that? Um, if this were a brand new topic to me and I didn't know what I was doing, first thing I would do api.drupal.org. Uh, once you get here, you can see a few components of Drupal and just reading through, you'll see here a menu system. Um, and if you hover over to find navigation URLs and root page request to code base on URLs. That seems pretty interesting. We're talking about URLs. Let's check this out. Quick read through, I'm not going to do it for you, but you can do it. You can see it's talking about pass, defined, all this kind of stuff here. And it's talking about hook menu. We know that hooks in Drupal actually allow us to interact with Drupal core. So hook menu seems like a pretty likely candidate for us to do something. Uh, and we see here, define menu items and page callbacks. This hook allows, uh, enables modules to register paths in order to define how URL requests are handled. That sounds like exactly what we need to do. So a bunch of information here, you can all read it. Um, what I'll do is I'll scroll you down to this stuff where it starts talking about return value. And you return an array of menu items. And for each menu item, what you need to do is provide like a title, a title callback, uh, a bunch of different stuff. Uh, not all of it's required, some of it is. So I'm going to walk you through this, uh, but this can all seem pretty daunting. So if you're like me, you're probably left scratching your head wondering what the hell are these guys talking about? Um, so a good way to actually dive into this and figure out what the hell is going on is to look at the code from Drupal. Drupal is open source, which is awesome. So let's go ahead and leverage what others have already done. If I go back to the root of Drupal, uh, you'll see that there's this modules folder. A whole bunch of modules come with Drupal and one of them being Node. So let's take a look at Node. Again, get into this folder and if you're like me, you're like, what the hell am I looking at? But you can see here, we've got node.module. We have a .module file, so this seems pretty intuitive. Let's go ahead and check out what node.module offers. So I'm just gonna get my code editor back and I'm gonna drag this in. Hopefully it'll let me select it. Nope. So what I'll do is just go here, go here, take this node module file. And what I'm gonna do is just a hook, actually not even hook, I'm gonna look for uh, menu underscore menu. Uh, so we find it in the second uh, instance here. And we can see uh, hook menu is actually node menu, right? Implements hook menu. And here, actually, the first item is this admin slash content. That seems like exactly what we want. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy all of this code here. And then I'm going to go back into my module. And I'm going to remove this because that's kind of a giveaway. I'm going to save this and then I'm going to paste this. Uh, so you'll see I was working ahead there. Um, but let's walk through this. First thing I want to do, actually close my bracket for the function. So that's number one. Uh, next thing I would do is I would comment this, but obviously node, uh, the node module did that. So third thing that I've got to do is I know that all function signatures should be flag application slash uh, whatever. Flag application being the replacement for the hook. So I need to remove node and put in flag application in there. So that's the first thing. 
Second thing I need to do is I go to uh, api.drupal.org and it says the return value is an array of menu items. So I want to make sure, because actually when I was testing this out, I forgot to do it and couldn't figure out what was going wrong. I want to return that array. So I'm going to type in return items. And that's because items is actually this array that's being created. So make sure that that's returned so that Drupal actually gets the pass that we create. So that's number three. Number four, actually start working on this array. Let's figure out what's going on. So uh, if we scroll way up here, uh, you'll see that it starts talking about um, you're going to return a key and each key is going to be the actual path that you're providing. So this abc slash def, that would be a path. And so just going way back down here, if I go back to my code, uh, you'll see that admin slash content was what was actually created by the node menu, uh, which we saw. So rather, what I would like to have is this related to flag. So go back over here, and if I hover over structure, flag, uh, ignore flag application that's there, that's from before when I was testing. Uh, I can see down at the bottom, uh, you can't see it because it's past this recording, but the path for flags, let's just go ahead and go there, admin structure slash flags. Let's copy that because I want to build off of that. And so let's let's paste this in here. And then admin slash structure slash flags, flag application. That way, when I hover over structure flags, I'll get flag application just like it's showing up here right now. And that's showing up right there now because it's cached. I haven't reloaded that page uh, because I was actually cheating and working ahead. Now, created the path. Next thing we need to do, let's start looking at these keys and figure out what the hell's going on. So title, go back to api.drupal.org. And title is actually required. And what this is is the untranslated title, uh, title of the menu item. That makes sense. So we do not want this to be content. We want this to be flag applications. The description, this seems like it would be intuitive, and it is the untranslated description of the menu item. So let's go ahead and add our own. Uh, find and manage content. Let's go find and manage flag applications. So page callback. Hmm, that seems like a different one. Let's go ahead and check this out. The function to call to display a web page when the user visits the path. Okay. If omitted, the parent menu items callback will be used instead. Uh, we don't want that. Uh, the parent menu item would be admin slash structure slash flags. We don't want that. We want our own function called. So what did node module provide? It provided Drupal get form. Reason why I did that is because if you go to uh, content, this is actually a form that's being provided. When you hit update or, for, or filter, you're submitting a form. And so that's exactly what we want to do because we're going to update and we're going to approve or deny. So we want to keep Drupal get form. So that makes sense. Let's figure out what page arguments are all about. Go back over to hook menu, page arguments, an array of arguments to pass to the page callback function with path component substitution as described above. So I'll let you read about this above. Essentially what it's talking about is you can get wildcards in your path um, you can look at the node menu, uh, or sorry, node module, an example of this. You'll just scroll down. Where's a good one here? Uh, here, percent node type. Percent is actually a node argument. So uh, another one be if you go to node slash four, and the four is the NID, that is an argument. You need to pass it into the function so that it knows what you're talking about when it goes to load node four. Um, so anyways, that's beyond this one. But if you were passing uh, arguments, that's how you would do it. And so in this case, when you use Drupal get form, you're going to pass the name of the form that you're going to actually provide to this function. Uh, Drupal get form is something that's custom to the form API. And so we need to create our own function name here. And so we are going to do that and call it flag application form. Pretty intuitive. So that's good. Now access arguments. Um, access arguments relate to uh, access permissions. And so hook permissions is not something we're going to cover in this tutorial, but it is something we need to address because you need to provide some access um, uh, argument or some access callback uh, to determine if a user can actually go to this menu, right? All menus have permissions, and so you can get to a URL or you can't get to a URL. You need to provide this. Otherwise, if you don't, you won't be able to get to that path. I learned that the hard way when I was preparing for this module and I had commented this out thinking we'd come back to it, which you can't actually do. So because we're just in development, we're just gonna leave this as access content. And so what ends up happening, I'll show you on uh, api.drupal.org. If you go to uh, access callback, this is the function that you actually call uh, and you need to return true or false. So actually as a better example, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create an access callback and this is the proper way to do it, not what I was going to show you. So access callback for development purposes is going to be true. 
we can just pass true in there. Um, and then we can get uh, access arguments out of there. And let's just make sure uh, a function returning true. Um, yeah, it's going to want a function. So let's go ahead and actually define this. Um, so again, we'll come back to this, but you're going to go with flag application perm. Um, and that's because, again, sorry, I hate to do this to you, but if you go to uh, hook and then start typing permission, you see hook permission, so it's not hook perm. Um, hook permission used to be hook perm, I thought. Um, we're just going to go here and we're just going to go permission. So that's the name. And then what we're going to do down here is just going to implement hook permission. Uh, don't worry about this. I know I'm going super fast, but I didn't anticipate actually going over this. Uh, and we're going to cover this in another uh, video tutorial. Uh, but hook permission um, takes no arguments and it's just going to return true. And we'll make sure that doesn't screw things up. So we'll save that. Um, and we should be good. Uh, so that's access callback. Remember, you need to have something here. Like you need to have some access that returns true. Um, so the weight, what this refers to, uh, you can check it out on api.drupal.org. But essentially, it's going to be, you know, where does this fall when you actually go into here? So there's a bunch of children here. So add flag, actions, import, export. Minus 10 actually puts us right under add flag. Uh, so that might, you know, depends on what you actually want to do. We can make this zero and it will fall lower. Let's see where it ends up. Now, lastly, this file, this is something that's a little bit different. Um, so essentially Drupal, one of the arguments about Drupal is uh, you can result in this code bloat, right? Where you end up loading just, you know, millions of lines of code because you're using all these different modules and whatnot. And so one of the ways to alleviate that is in, in hook menu is to provide this file key. And so what this means is, it will load this file, but only when you go to this specific URL. Um, and the reason why that's handy is because then it won't load the code in node admin slash ink. Um, and it's just a way to kind of, you know, free up some server resources. Um, uh, this can become pretty powerful. You'll see it in a bunch of different places. Um, so what we are going to do is we're going to leverage this as well. And we're going to create flag application uh, admin ink. So I'm going to copy that because I need to create that file save that and we should be good. Uh, last thing that we obviously need to do is we need to go back to our server here, or our site. We need to go to sites, all modules, custom flag application. That's where we're leaving our, or where our module exists. And I'm gonna create a new file here. I'm gonna paste in the name. Yes, that's fine. Change the name. And we're gonna drop this into the, um, into our actual file here. And you'll see that I've already got some code uh, because Eclipse had it cached. So I added a comment uh, at flag, and then I've got a uh, function, which we told we were going to define. Whenever you're creating forms, uh, the function that you're going to provide is going to be, uh, you're going to pass in a form, and you're going to pass in a form state. Uh, you need to make sure to return that form. So that's why I've got return form down here, and I just printed hello world to see, make sure that our, our module is working properly. Uh, so we saved that. We're going to go ahead, we're going to flush all these caches. We need to flush caches because we used hook menu, and uh, menu items in Drupal are all cached. And so if you don't you if you don't flush the caches, you'll never see that. So rather than write a comment, because I see it a lot that says, hey, my 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 menu's not working. Uh, have you tried flushing your caches? It's always going to be the number one result that, or answer you get first. So here, structure, flags, there's flag application. Uh, apparently changing the weight didn't do anything. Um, and so this looks to be a problem. Flag application form not found. I mean, either way, we're getting to flag application, so that's great. I think that error might be cached. I don't know. No, nope, it's not. Um, you can see here, we're good. Print application, flag application uh, form. Is that where we created it? Flag application form. Yeah, so it doesn't matter. We'll, we'll fix that in the next video tutorial. The, the fact remains that we actually created flag applications here. This is our admin page. Um, in the next video tutorial, what we'll do is we'll actually return all the flags, uh, and we'll look at theming using the theme table to actually theme them out. Um, and in doing so, you look at a database query to select information and actually return it. Uh, and we'll use pagers in that too. So that'll be pretty exciting. Uh, anyways, uh, that was sarcastic. Um, uh, anyways, if this video tutorial helped you, please leave me a comment. Let me know. Uh, always appreciate that. Give this video a thumbs up and hopefully I'll see you for the next video tutorial. It won't be too long from now. Thanks very much for watching.